Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the classroom, it's Mr. Lowe and today we'll be talking about transport systems in living things. So this is part 1 of the two-part lecture series for this chapter. Now in this part, we'll be talking about the transport systems in human beings as well as plants. As you probably already know, um, throughout the, in our bodies, we need to transport substances such as oxygen, water, nutrients, so on and so forth, you know, throughout the body. And in this chapter, we'll be talking about how uh, this circulatory system in our body actually does that. Okay, we'll be also looking at the plant equivalent. Right, so this section, um, this, this part of the lecture series comprises of three different parts. 15.1, what are the functions of transport system and what are its different parts? 15.2, what are the processes involved in transporting substances in and out of our cells? And last but not least, what issues arise when parts of the human transport system do not work well? Right, so let's begin. So what are the functions of uh, our transport systems, right? Okay, so in this section, you should know that uh, how to describe the functions of the arteries, veins and capillaries in our body and uh, talking about plants, okay, show an understanding that the functions of the xylem and the phloem. Okay, we also need to explain why is there a need for this type of transport systems in organisms that are multicellular. Okay, so you might have learned in the previous lesson, previous sorry, previous chapter that uh, organisms can be divided into uni uh, unicellular or multicellular, right? So organisms like humans, animals, and plants, we are made up of many many different cells and we are called multicellular organisms. Alright, so we humans and plants, we both need a transport system to stay alive. Of course, this transport system does not refer to our buses, our trains uh, and whatnot, right? This is transport system in our body, in the human body, okay? So inside our bodies, as well as plants, okay, these transport systems are made out of different, different parts. Okay, so in, in the same way as we have different organs that serve different function, each part of this transport system, which you probably know as circulatory system, um, work together, right, to get things, to move things around in our body, right? So what are these substances? You have oxygen, digestive food, water and waste. So think about at the cell level, what do the cells take in and what do the cells give out? Okay, for respiratory, sorry, for respiration, I should say. Right. So you probably already know the cells take in oxygen, nutrients and water and then it gives out waste material and carbon dioxide. Right. So all these things, the oxygen, um, the nutrients and the water have to be transported to the individual cells. And how does, how does the body do that? Of course, through this transport system. Okay, so we look, uh, we we'll dive deeper into that. Okay, so. The transport system in humans also known as the circulatory system. You do know that, okay? We have the digestive system that we learned in the previous chapter. We are now looking at this circulatory system. Alright, so it's made of three main parts. The heart, right, which is the pump that pumps blood um, throughout the body. You have the blood, which is um, the, the, the vehicle you know, used to carry the different substances uh, that needs to be transported around, as well as blood vessels, which is the pipes, right? So you can think of cars and traffic roads as well, right? So the blood is like the individual um, vehicles that transport people or goods around and the blood vessels are the roads or the highways, alright? Okay, so we have the heart, right? Uh, you probably already know that the heart is the muscular pump that constantly pumps uh, throughout your life. Even though you don't consciously tell you to do so, it knows that you should be pumping, right? So it's near uh, the chest somewhere to the left, right? So it beats about 100, uh, sorry, 60 to 100 times per minute depending on your activity level and its purpose is to keep the blood flowing or circulating, sorry, circulating rather throughout the body. Okay, and then you have the, uh, you have the vessel to, that, that carries the, the substances, the blood, right? So blood, as you know, it flows throughout your body. All right, so it consists of a few things. Okay, mainly you have your red blood cells. Okay, which con uh, so as you probably already know, red blood cells are in charge of transporting oxygen throughout the body. All right, so how does it do so? Because it contains this substance called hemoglobin. All right, you have to remember the spelling. All right, so hemoglobin is uh, is, is a molecule whereby oxygen is able to bind to. Right, it's attached 
the oxygen is able to attach to this hemoglobin and being transported throughout your body. All right. You also have um, the counterpart white blood cells and that is your immunity system. Right? So it protects your body from infections and diseases by um, attacking the viruses or bacteria directly. All right, so red and white blood cells. Of course, there are also other parts. Okay, so you also have the platelets. So if you suffer a cut, right, a minor or major cut, and over time you see your wound heal, and there is this black, dark brownish um, substances that you can peel off after some time, after it dries up, there's the platelets, right? It's actually in your blood as well. So the purpose of these platelets is just to cover up these wounds, right? Clotting of blood to prevent excessive bleeding. So without these platelets, you will just you will just bleed to death, right? From a small little cut, okay? Because there's nothing to just stop the wound, right? To heal the wound. All right. Next up, you have plasma. This plasma is just a liquid substance that uh, mainly made of water. Okay, so it transports water and your dissolved. Um, nutrients and mineral salts and other stuff to the different parts of the body. All right, so this is when uh, things are being dissolved in, right, and it's being transported. Okay, so this plasma itself made up to more than half the volume of the blood. So how do we know all this, right? So if you take your blood, a blood sample, okay, and you put it in this centrifuge machine, what it does is once the cover is um, is kept, the inside of the machine will start spinning real fast. Okay, it will start spinning real fast. And what it does is, it allows the different parts of the blood to be separated. Okay, so if you look at the diagram on the right hand side, you can see that 55% is plasma. So you have the water, all your dissolved nutrients, waste, you know, oxygen and whatnot. Sorry, and other gases, not oxygen. Oxygens are being carried by your red blood cells, which forms 44% of your blood and the remaining 1% is your platelets and the white blood cells. Right, so this is what your blood is made out of. Alright, so we have the blood and it is being uh, transported, you know, carried around in blood vessels, which is like the pipes right, and tunnels for your blood to flow. All right. So, in your body, there are three different types of blood vessels. You have the artery, okay, so if you look at the, your body, maybe you look at your arms or if you look at your palm, you may be able to see um, some blood vessels that are red in colour, okay, those are artery, okay, and you have the veins, okay, the veins are more visible, they are typically bluish, okay, dark blue, if you can look at your skin, you may be able to spot some, especially on your forearm, alright, so, the artery carries blood away from the heart, while the veins carry blood towards the heart. So remember, blood has to be sent you know, from the heart to the rest of the body and from the rest of the body back to the heart. So it's a cycle, right? It's a, yeah. And then between the artery and the veins, there are capillaries. Now capillaries are more fine and smaller blood vessels. Okay. So what does it do, right? It's the site of exchange of um, different substances. Um, between your blood and the cells. Okay, we will look at it later. Okay, so you have the artery, right? So as we said just now, the artery carries blood away from the heart to the rest of the body. And because um, the blood pumping away from the heart to the rest of the body actually bypasses the... so actually pass by the, uh, the, the lungs. So it actually carries all the oxygen that you inhale in to your lungs Okay, to the rest of the body which needs you know, the oxygen, right? So this artery carries blood rich in oxygen right, to, the, to the rest of the body. And this type of blood is what we call oxygenated blood, right? So it contains oxygen, it's oxygenated, all right? So of course, besides oxygen, you also need to carry the nutrients right, and the water to the rest of the body where your cells uh, will absorb the, the, all this stuff, right? Okay, then when it comes to um, uh, the rest of the body, okay, all this artery will break up into smaller capillaries. Okay, so if you look at your fingertips, um, the blood vessels are finer compared to your main artery, which could be at your neck or on your limbs. Right? So all these capillaries are much finer blood vessels, smaller. Okay, so what does it do? First of all, it, con it connects the arteries to the veins. Okay, so as you can see in the picture, on the left is red color, 
right, the, the, the blood vessels are more red, um, rich in oxygen, and the rest are bluish, right? So that's um, blood that's, that has less oxygen content. So that's the veins. So your capillaries will connect the artery to the veins. Okay, so besides doing that, it's also the site of exchange of substances to the cells. That means when your blood carries all the oxygen, the nutrients, the water, right, which to be uh, transported to the cells eventually, uh, this is when these substances are being passed to the cells, to the individual cells. Okay, and in exchange, the cell will um, expel out all the waste substances and carbon dioxide. Right? This is also when uh, the blood will carry away, right? it will take away the carbon dioxide and waste substances to be passed back to the heart. All right? So, once they carry all the um, carbon dioxide and waste substances, then it passes to the veins. The blood then passes to the veins. So, at this point in time, remember that the blood is low in oxygen level. Right, so we call that deoxygenated blood. Okay, so instead of having a lot of oxygen, it now has a lot of carbon dioxide and waste substances. So this is how exactly, um, you know, a simplified diagram in a way, uh, how these substances such as oxygen, nutrients, uh, are being passed to the cells at the capillary level. All right, so the concept here is called diffusion right you see the word diffusion of molecules um, in the diagram right so um, so what happens here is oxygen and digested food are being diffused out from the capillary from the from the blood into the cells okay we'll look at this concept called diffusion um, in more details later okay so as it goes on right the concentration of oxygen in the blood decreases okay uh, as they move throughout the capillary now after that when the cells take in the oxygen and digested food you do know that they have to uh, uh, through respiration right they give out carbon dioxide and waste substances all this will diffuse back into the capillary into the bloodstream and is to be carried away from the rest of the body okay so Moving forward, all right, just a quick test for yourself. State the function of the following parts. What's the function of the heart? What's the function of red blood cells, artery, and veins? So, recap a little bit. Heart is a pump, all right? So, it's a blood pump that pumps blood throughout the body constantly or continuously. Red blood cells, they are the ones who are in charge of carrying the oxygen, right, through the rest of the body. So, they contain the hemoglobin. That's the one that allows oxygen to be bound to and carried to the rest of the body. Artery is the red colored, you know, the, the red colored uh, uh, blood vessel. Okay, so that's the one that uh, carries the blood that is pumped from the heart to the rest of the body, which is also rich in oxygen. We call it oxygenated blood. Vein is the opposite. They are the ones that carry the deoxygenated blood. Right, the ones um, low in oxygen content, rich in carbon dioxide and waste materials and whatnot towards the heart to be expelled out of the body. Alright, so done with humans, we're now looking at the transport system and plants. Right, so there's a backstory here. Okay, in the past, okay, um, farmers actually do this thing. They actually cut away a, a thin layer, not say very thin, right? they actually cut away a layer of the bark of the tree. Uh, of the of the fruits they want to grow, right? Okay. So what's the purpose of this? They realize that when they do that, um, the fruits actually get bigger. Okay, bigger. Uh, so they actually, I mean, bigger fruits uh, uh, are sold at a better price, right? So this is why they actually do this thing to the trees. Poor thing, right? All right. But at the same time, the farmers also found out that if I remove too much tissue underneath the bark, that means I cut too deep a layer. Right, of this uh, ring of, of bark, uh, it can cause the tree to die. So, um, in this part of chapter, we, when we study the transport system of the plants, we also at the same time figure out why is it that cutting away a thin layer causes bigger fruits to be produced, and why is it that if I cut too deep, a little bit too deep, the whole tree will die. Okay, so here is the transport system in plants. It's not as complicated as humans. Basically, you have two types of tissues, 
the xylem and the phloem. Okay, so the xylem and the phloem combined together is what we call the vascular bundle. Okay, so you can see in this diagram here that is the microscopic view of um, the cross section of a plant. So basically, if you chop the branch and you look, you put it under the microscope, this is what you see. Okay, you can see the xylem tissue and the phloem tissue, right? They are tissues, by the way. All right, okay, so. What do they do, right? Okay, the xylem, they are long tubes of vessels, okay, passing from the roots to the leaf that transport water and mineral salts. So you do know that, okay, the roots of the plants absorb water and mineral salts from the uh, soil, right, from underground, and then it's to be passed or transported to the rest of the plants, such as to the leaves or to the fruit, for that matter, right? So the xylem is the, uh, is the tube Right, that, that passes water right, from the roots to the, to the rest of the plant. And then, you also know that, on the other hand, okay, leaves produce the food okay, of the plant through photosynthesis. And this food, of course, is to be passed from the leaves to the rest of the plants that need the food as well. Okay? So this job is accomplished by the phloem tissues. Okay? So they are in charge of transporting the food from the leaves to the rest of the plant. Together, these two are called the vascular bundles. Alright, so you might have heard or seen this experiment, okay? So basically, if you soak a plant or a rose for that matter, or a flower, right? Um, with the roots, okay? If you soak the roots into um, colored water, over time you will see that the rest of the plant, be it the flower or the leaves, will exhibit that color of the water that you soak in. Alright, so this experiment shows that xylem right transports water from the roots to the leaves of the plant all right so, so it actually absorbs the color of the water that you soak it in and you realize that hey this color is being transported to the rest of the plant as well okay okay so here comes the the interesting thing why is it that when we remove a layer of the tree bark okay the uh, the fruits actually get bigger the tree is actually able to to bear bigger fruits, right? Okay, so, to understand this, we have to look back at the diagram of the vascular bundle. So, if you look at the vascular bundle, it con again, it contains xylem and phloem, right? So, they are arranged in this very special way. You can see from the, sand, the, the cross section in the middle um, that this xylem is represented by the orange or red color um, semicircle. Okay, and the phloem is represented by the light blue colored ones. Okay, so which one, the xylem or the phloem, is nearer to the bark, nearer to the outside? Okay, if you look carefully, you realize that it's the phloem. Alright, so if I were to cut a layer of tree bark without cutting too deep, what I can actually achieve is I am cutting away the phloem from a section of the stem without touching the xylem tissue. And so this is exactly what the farmers do, right? So by removing a, a, a layer of the bark, the outer layer, we are actually cutting away the phloem, okay, from that section, and leaving the xylem intact. So what's happening here? Remember that the phloem is in charge of transporting food from the leaves to the rest of the plant. If I cut away this transport, this or rather this uh, this tube, right, this pipe that transports food, what's happening here? The food would not be able to flow down from the leaves to the rest of the body. Or rather, to the rest of the plant, sorry, not body, right? Okay, now, because the xylem is still intact, water can still flow. Alright, now, what we're doing here again is that we are cutting away the transport of food, but we are remaining the transport for water. So what we will observe, first of all, is that the top part of the, 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 the stem, right, just above where we cut that section away, it will start to swell. Now, why does it swell then? Well, if you think about it, you see, the, the food is being produced from the leaves and is to be transported downwards, right, to the rest of the plants, such as the roots, okay? Now, when you remove that section, the food is being stuck in the top half of the plant. It's not able to come down. 
right? So this causes the swelling. So food is not able to reach the roots, it will just continue to stay above. So unfortunately, the roots will starve and die too because it's not receiving food from the leaves. All right, real sad. Okay, so because the roots starve and die, it is not able to absorb water. Therefore, the plant as a whole dies as well. Even though the, the xylem is still intact, there is still a channel to transport water, but the roots are dead. So there's no absorbing of water and minerals. So eventually, the whole plant will die uh, over time. But you see, when the nutrients are being stuck at the top half, or rather the food right, is being stuck at the top half of the tree, you see the swelling in the tree trunk. At the same time, because the fruits are also at the top half of the tree, ah, this, these fruits will, re, will be able to retain more food or more nutrients that is being produced uh, from the leaves. This is why you get bigger fruits. But after you produce the bigger fruits, over time, the roots will die, the whole tree will die. Right, so this is a, clearly this is a one-off thing, right? I'm, once I cut off, I get one time big fruits. But after that, the whole tree will die. I have to replant the whole thing. Alright, so when you see that when the farmers do this kind of things, alright, when you cut away a, a, a thin layer of the bark, okay, and you, you observe the swelling of the trunk above the cut and the bigger fruits, okay, this tells us very clearly that food is being transported from the leaves to the other parts of the plant via the phloem, which is the outer layer, right, of the vascular bundle that we actually remove, right. So what, ha what happens if we actually cut too deep is that, well, we actually cut away the xylem too. So no way the plant can survive, no way, no way it can um, produce uh, big fruits as well, right. Okay, so when we talk about um, the transport system in humans and plants, right, uh, why, is, why is it so important? Why are we talking about all these things? Well, as I said at the beginning of this video, we do know that um, as a living organism, multicellular organism, we need nutrients and oxygen as well. And because our bodies are uh, made up of so many cells, there is a need to transport all these essential substances to every single cell in our body. All right? And often the source of all these nutrients are far away from where all the cells are. So for instance, um, we inhale oxygen and uh, oxygen goes into our lungs. And if you consider your legs and your, your hands, right, they're pretty far away from the lungs. So the oxygen from the lungs have to go to the legs, your legs and your hands or whatever other parts of the body. Right? So there is a need for this transport system. So likewise, if you look at the plant itself, the food is being made in the leaves and it has to go to the roots. So clearly there's a need to transport. Also, water and mineral salts are being absorbed in the roots on one end and he has to reach the leaves and fruits on the other end. So there's also a need to transport all these things throughout the plant. And so that's it for this um, half of this uh, uh, two parts lecture series. All right. So just do a quick recap, right? Okay. In this part, we learn about the various parts of our circulatory system. Okay, the heart, the blood vessels, the blood, and all its components as well. Okay, we also learn about the transport system within the plant, okay, which is essentially just the xylem and the phloem, okay, which made out of a vascular bundle. What each of these two things do, what do they transport? And we look at one, um, we look at two experiments or observations that indeed show that xylem is the one that transports water, while phloem is the one that transports food. Right, so you got to remember why is it that this cutting of the outer layer of the bark shows that phloem is the one that transports food from the leaf to the rest of the plant. And last but not least, we also looked at why is it that it's important for um, organisms like, or rather multicellular organisms like humans and the plants require a complicated uh, transport system within the bodies themselves. Alright, so that's all for today's lecture. I'll see you back in class. Take care.